Hey everybody, it's Miss Fisher Belmont in the library. Today we're going to talk about coming of age novels. These are also called Bildung's Roman novels, and what it means is that the central character experiences some really important difficulty that helps them grow and mature in an important way. The first one that we're going to look at is called A Good Kind of Trouble by Lisa Moore Ramey. In this novel, Shayla thinks that she might be allergic to trouble, and in junior high, it seems like there's only trouble available. Her friends are fighting, her sister is very much involved with the Black Lives Matter protests, and she's struggling to figure out where, she, where her place is in the world. When a police officer goes to trial for the murder of an unarmed Black man, she has to decide if there's any trouble good enough to keep the itches away. Shay is scared to do the wrong thing and even more scared to do the right thing. What will Shay decide? Walk with Shay and as she navigates the complexity of identity and friends in this novel by Lisa Moore Ramey. Next up, we have an incredible graphic novel, a graphic novel that has won tons of awards. We're talking the Michael Prince Award, the National Book Award, the Publishers Weekly Award for Best Comic. This is a great one. It's called American Born Chinese. And as you can see, I have some pages tabbed because I want to show you some stuff. This book is actually three stories woven into one. Your job as the reader is to figure out the connection. So the first story is of Jin Wang. And Jin Wang moves to a new school and a new neighborhood. And he finds out he is the only Chinese American his age in the neighborhood. He is picked on constantly because he is different. He doesn't have any friends. And then what becomes his greatest struggle is he finds out that he's in, or figures out that he's in love with the all-American girl. Next up, we have the fable of the Monkey King. The Monkey King is an ancient Chinese fable. And in this fable, you have the Monkey King, who is the ruler of all the monkeys. He's, he's great at the art of Kung Fu. He's, uh, he's worshipped by other monkeys. However, he doesn't want to be a monkey. He wants to be a god. And last up, we have the story of Chin Ki, who is a horrible uh, Chinese stereotype that we're meant to learn a lot from, especially with his relationship with his cousin Danny. Every year he comes to see his cousin Danny, who is a popular kid at school. But every year, Chin Ki ruins his reputation and destroys his life, and Danny has to transfer schools. Your job as the reader is to figure out how these three are connected in this amazing novel, graphic novel, by Jean Luen Yang, American-born Chinese. Next up, we have Cindy Baldwin's Where the Watermelons Grow. I really like this book. It, as you can see, it's not at the Walnut Library. This is in Libby or, or Overdrive, if you have that. This is about 12-year-old Della Kelly. And Della has known her entire life that her mother struggles with mental illness. When Della walks into the kitchen late one night to find her mother carving watermelon seeds out of the watermelon that she is certain is going to harm her daughter, Della knows that her mother is on the verge of another schizophrenic episode. In efforts to control her mother's illness, Star Della starts doing all of her mom's chores, including taking care of her baby sister, Miley, plus doing all of her own chores on the farm. She even confides in the local mysterious bee lady, Miss Tabitha, who has these magical honeys that can cure just about anybody. But when Miss Tabitha says she doesn't have a honey that could cure her mother, but she does have a honey that could cure Della, Della is confused and overwhelmed and angry. She wants to help her mother, and she doesn't feel that anything is wrong with her. She can't tell her friends or extended family about Mama, and her worries about her family begin to consume her. How can Della help her Mama and protect her from the gossips of Maryville? This is an important book, talking about the difficulties of mental health and the importance of normalizing that conversation. Next up, we have another award winner. This one was a New York Times bestseller. It uh, won the Abe Lincoln Award, and it's a really compelling read. It's called Dear Martin by Nick Stone. And this is about Justice McAllister. Justice McAllister is going places. He attends one of the best boarding schools in the nation and is in the top of his class there. He knows the Ivy League is in his future. 
But when Justice tries to help his drunk girlfriend, who happens to have lighter skin than him, get home safely after a night out, none of that matters. None of his accomplishments matter to the officer who pulls up behind him. All Officer Castillo sees is Justice's dark skin and immediately racially profiles him and assumes the worst. As Justice tries to physically and mentally recover from this unwarranted arrest, Justice begins to write letters to Dr. Martin Luther King, imagining what he would have done. But the more Justice tries to be like Dr. King, the more difficult it seems to be. Follow along with Justice in this novel written in various genres, including narratives, letters to Dr. King, and news reports. The last book we're going to look at today is Ivy Aberdeen's Letter to the World. When 12-year-old Ivy Aberdeen's house is destroyed in a tornado, her whole world crashes down around her. The one object she thought to grab before heading to shelter was her treasured, treasured journal, which contains all of her secret drawings. But when she loses the journal in the chaos of her family's displacement, she's terrified that all of her secrets will be revealed, including that so many of her drawings feature girls holding hands. When drawings from her journal start reappearing in her locker at school with mysterious notes, Ivy is terrified that she will be exposed. With her family consumed with her twin baby brothers and rebuilding their house, Ivy feels completely alone with nowhere to turn. Will Ivy be courageous enough to speak her own truth? Find out in this Stonewall Honor book, Ivy Aberdeen's Letter to the World by Ashley Herring Blake. That was obviously just a handful of coming of age books, but there are hundreds and hundreds of more out there. So how do you find it? Well, as you can see in your browser, I have Cincinnati Public Library's uh, Libby open. This can also work in OverDrive. I'm going to go up to those search terms and I'm going to type in coming of age. All right. I want to uh, see all the options. So sometimes it doesn't automatically open. If I don't, if it doesn't automatically open, I want to go to more options and I'm going to narrow that down to young adult fiction because that's really what I'm looking at here. It's young adult fiction. Now, this is instead going to look, instead of looking for titles that include coming of age, now it's going to look at ones that have what are called tags in them, meaning that a librarian tagged them as coming of age. So we're going to search and see what we come up with. And what we find is that there are 756 books and 208 audiobooks that all come under that umbrella of coming of age. I can look between these and uh, see if there's anything I want to borrow. Now you'll notice here at the top, this one says place hold. That means that somebody already has it checked out, so I couldn't access that one. Now, it's probably going to be available within the next two weeks or so, so I could come back then if I wanted. But if I know I'm on a time crunch for my class, I want to look at the ones that just say borrow. So if I'm interested in this book, what I'll do is click on it. When I'm ready to borrow, I click borrow, and now it is in on my shelf. Okay, if I go to my shelf, I can go there and just start reading it. All right. When I'm ready to return it, I can either just simply let it time out because it automatically times out, no late fees, or if I'm ready to return it early, I go to manage loan, return early, and return. That's it. Happy reading, y'all. We can't wait to see you in the library.